La violence, c'est le produit de la justice. Quand on n'a pas compris ça, eh bien, euh, on fait comme la Commission européenne, on propose des textes contre la violence. Every nation in every region now has a decision to make. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. Het was een indrukwekkende, maar politiek gevaarlijke Amerikaanse gast die vorige week even Pakistan aandeed. Noam Chomsky, controversieel criticus die na 11 september fel Amerika bekritiseerde. I think there's a very good definition of terrorism. There's a perfectly fine definition in the US code and in US army manuals, which I think is exactly right. Uh, it says basically that terrorism, I'll give a brief version, is the calculated threat or use of force to intimidate uh, civilian populations in order to obtain uh, religious, political, national, or other such goals. That definition in the U in army manuals happens to be almost identical to the definition of official U.S. policy, which is called counterinsurgency, or low-intensity warfare. And that's, take a look, they're almost the same. Furthermore, if you follow that definition directly, you immediately draw the conclusion uh, that the U.S. is a leading terrorist state, not surprisingly, since it's the most powerful state, that terrorism is overwhelmingly a weapon of the powerful against the weak, as you'd expect, uh, and that the list of, uh, you know, terrorists is horrifying. Erg blij zal de Amerikaanse regering niet geweest zijn met Chomsky's bezoek aan hun nieuw hervonden bondgenoot Pakistan. Maar de Pakistanse journaliste Bina Sarwar kon niet wachten op zijn komst. Hi Babet. Well, Chomsky is come and gone. Five days that shook Pakistan. The Noam Chomsky. I couldn't believe it. I wanted to film the Chomsky visit, so I asked Parvez Hudboy if I could. Parvez is a physics professor in Islamabad and has known Chomsky for over 30 years. Parvez and I know each other through the peace movement in Pakistan. Yes, there is one, and it manages to make quite a lot of noise, even though it's not very big. Do you have a copy of that uh, that publication that uh, just the dawn just uh, made? Oh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you bring that? Yeah. It's very useful. It's got some good stuff in it. Professor Chomsky's dates in Pakistan were finalized over six months ago to coincide with his third visit to India. At that time, neither he nor Parvez had any idea that the visit would cause such a furor here. In fact, Parvez had wondered how he would get enough people to attend the lectures. But then September 11th happened. Noam Chomsky's was one of the first responses which tried to rationalize the attack and go into the roots of the terror. It was circulated on the net and his articles and interviews published in some of the English language papers here. So it's a time of uh, reassessment, a time of great dangers. For now, the Americans have bombed the Taliban into submission. It's the triumph of technology over theology. But it's a battle that they won, not the war, because Muslim resentments are very deep. And uh, September 11th may be just the precursor of very bad times to come. It may be that this is the beginning of a new century of terror. And really, if the world is wise and you need wisdom on both sides, on the one hand, the United States has to change its policy of uh, arrogance, of disregard for the rest of the world. Anyway, Noam Chomsky was sure to be warmly welcomed in Pakistan. And so it was. Suddenly, everyone was talking about his upcoming visit and trying to get invitations. After all, here is an American who is aware what his country's foreign policy is doing to the world and who isn't afraid to say what he thinks of it. As such, he is in a unique position. He says what we in the peace movement have been saying, but says it better, more rationally. No one wants to hear it when we say it, but when it's Chomsky, an American, it's a different matter. Chomsky's lecture turned into a media event, lapped up by the elite. actually had the guts to speak out about what, what are the wrongs, what America is actually doing. And that's what really attracted me. That's why I'm so 
People already knew pretty much what Chomsky would say. His now famous lecture at MIT in October has been widely circulated on email. He has openly called the USA a terrorist state, a rogue state, but he has also given logical reasons for this accusation. More than comfortable, we are luxurious. Although Chomsky was on a private visit, the security provided for him was amazing. It was more like for a visiting minister than an unassuming dissident professor. The lecture was a VIP event, which he must have been somewhat embarrassed by. All right, as long as he's out by five. Perfect, high five. Through the kitchen. Oh. <laughs> There was a possibility that General Musharraf would agree to meet Chomsky, but the Pakistani president wasn't about to risk annoying Washington by meeting with their fiercest critic. Thank you all very much. Uh, the crimes of September 11th are indeed a historic event, uh, but uh, because of the target. For the United States, that's the first time since the, since the British burned down Washington in 1814. It's the first time that the national territory has been under attack or under threat. Colonies have been attacked, but not the national territory. There's no need to review what's been done to others in these past two centuries, a huge number of victims. On September 11th, for the first time in almost two centuries, uh, the guns were pointed in the other direction, and that is indeed a dramatic change. Uh, the same is true even more dramatically for Europe. Uh, Europe, of course, has suffered murderous uh, wars and destruction, but that's uh, Europeans slaughtering one another, their favorite sport for hundreds of years. Uh, came to an end in 1945 only because even they recognized that the name, next time they play the game will be the last time for everyone. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Europe conquered much of the world, not very politely, let me go through the details. Uh, the, uh, but Euro Europeans were secure, they were safe from attack by others, uh, by their victims with very limited uh, and rare exceptions. So it's not, so this is indeed a historic change, and it's not at all surprising that Europeans should be so utterly shocked by the crimes of September 11th. Again, unfortunately, not because of their scale, uh, but because this is a drastic breach of the norms of acceptable behavior of hundreds of years. Uh, it's also not surprising that they should remain complacent or perhaps mildly regretful about the even more terrible crimes that follow. That dual reaction makes good sense. The victims of the second crime are, after all, just uh, miserable, poor people. Uh, miserable Afghans, uh, uncivilized tribes, as Winston Churchill described them with contempt uh, 80 years ago when he ordered the uh, use of poison gas uh, to create what he called a lively terror uh, among the uncivilized tribes. Remember, that was the ultimate weapon at the time, uh, right after World War I. Uh, atrocities of that kind are unremarkable. They carry no moral stigma for one reason, because they're so familiar. Uh, even when there is no pretext apart from greed or uh, domination. Uh, and retribution uh, knows no bounds. There is ample historical evidence for that right in this subcontinent and elsewhere. And uh, there's also uh, ample authority in the holiest texts that are most revered. Chomsky's argument is based on reason rather than emotion. He gives solid evidence, much of it taken from documents that are available to the public except that how many of us have the patience and the dedication to find and go through these documents? Has the Muslim world become redundant? Well, you know, this is a process that's been going on for a long time, traced back to the Middle Ages. The Muslim world is in serious trouble. Uh, it's a big area of the world which is surviving mostly on a wasting resource, namely energy. Uh, that's not going to be there forever. It's another generation or two, and then either it won't be around or it won't be needed. Uh, that means hundreds of millions of people uh, without any fundamental base for continued 
successful existence. Uh, this is the t there's a brief period of time in which this region of the world can create the basis for sustained successful development, political, economic, everything else. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, its resources are being drained off to the West uh, through a complicated combination of reasons which you know very well. But if this opportunity is not taken, uh, the future in a generation or two looks very grim. For too long, we have been looking at the outside world. We've been dreaming of conspiracies, thinking that it's because of external factors that Muslims are backward today. But uh, the facts are to the contrary. Look for the last seven centuries. Muslims have produced no great scientists. They have produced no inventions, discovered nothing of significance, written very little philosophical literature. And uh, of course, it wasn't this way before that. But uh, since the triumph of orthodoxy over the liberal, enlightened elements in Islamic civilization, and they were the caliphs, they were the Mutazilites of the uh, ninth through the 14th centuries, that great period of the flowering of uh, Muslim intellect and thought. Since that time, the rigidity of Muslim um, dogmatists, it has stifled inquiry, stifled reason, stifled any kind of uh, scientific growth or intellectual growth. And that principally accounts for the weakness of Muslim civilization today. I mean, consider the fact that not one Muslim country has a democratic system of governance, that uh, not one of them has a viable education system. There are no universities to which you can send your children to in Muslim countries. And that's the real reason why Muslims are so under threat today and, and why they are so weak. Professor Chomsky, um, as far as many of us are concerned, the U.S. action in Afghanistan, moral or otherwise, has got rid of an extremely brutal and repressive regime, which, um, well, which had um, connections with similar sort of uh, forces in Pakistan as well. What would you have had them do? Have who do? The Americans. We have the Americans. It is not the authority of the United States to destroy oppressive regimes in the world. If it wants to do that, it has easy places. The easiest way to stop oppression and violence is to stop participating. That's much easier. Following Noam Chomsky at all the occasions where he spoke and interacted with the public was a learning experience for me personally. People who heard him speak seem to come out of it much more inclined to examine their own role in the problems that exist rather than continue to blame the West as the religious extremists do. Okay, Babette, that's it for now from Pakistan. Let's mail soon and we'll be in touch. Lots of love, Bina.